Hello, friends I haven't met yet, and maybe a few I have. I'm uh, out on a grey, flat, boring, lifeless sky day. Um, I have to confess something. When I first started in photography back in the 1970s, and often through the 80s as well, I was a, I was a fair weather photographer. So I actually used to wait for a blue sky, sunny day before I'd actually go out and take any pictures. Uh, but uh, considering that in England, we've got 150 plus gray sky days a year. So you really have to know how to make the most of those situations if you're a landscape photographer, because otherwise you're gonna be sat at home watching a lot of telly. Uh, so what do I do? Well, I don't claim to have all the answers for this one, but what I think is best is to suit the kind of weather to the location. So a, a place like St Ives, for example, in Cornwall, would not look good on a day like this with a gray flat sky, it'd be just so boring. So what I suggest is going to somewhere which actually suits a kind of moodier sort of sky. And I'm not talking about stormy skies, they're, anywhere suits those kind of pictures. I'm just talking about flat, lifeless, boring skies. Uh, there's a saying in landscape photography, flat light, black and white, but I'm gonna hopefully prove that you can get good color images as well. So I'm here at Carwin and Quoit, which is near Camborne, Cornwall. And this is a, oh no, I've done it again. I always do this. I think it's a burial chamber. Oh, God, oh dear. Uh, <laughs> so I'll look it up on the way out because there's a blinking sign on there that I, on the way in that I read. Um, anyway, so this kind of subject really does not suit color images so much. I mean, I still like them, but I just think this suits kind of gray, moody skies. The same as Bodmin Moor, Dartmoor, the Yorkshire Moors. The Peak District, it suits kind of moody skies. I think better probably than blue skies. Ideally, you want dramatic light. I mean, it would be wonderful if we had sideways sunlight coming through now, lighting up this, but that's not gonna to happen today because it's totally flat light and I can't see that the sun's gonna be out all day. But let's see what we can get here. So I've got my tripod down nice and low as I normally do. And it's particularly good in, in this instance because I'm looking up and I can have the sky above it. And also it's showing up this amazing little bit of tension that you get from this central supporting rock, uh, which just, I mean, how, how much that, that must weigh quite a few tons, that top rock, probably two or three tons. And it's just kind of gently poised on the edge there. It looks as though, you know, if you were really strong, you could push it over, but obviously you couldn't. Um, but I love that. So nice low viewpoint. And I'm deliberately trying not to keep it central in the frame, the quoit, because over to the left looks better, I think. So I'll show you what I've got through my viewfinder. So I think a central composition is okay. You know, not bad but a little bit boring. I slightly prefer it over to the side like that. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a shot there. Now, you might look through your viewfinder if you're a beginner and see something like that, which is fine exposed for the quoit, but the sky is gonna be completely washed out. So what I do is I underexpose slightly, perhaps by half a stop. So that's making the quoit quite dark as you can see. But I'm just gonna put it on a two second timer so that I don't get any vibration. And take that shot. Forgot to focus. <laughs> Rookie mistake. <laughs> Too much vlogging, not enough photographing. Uh, Yes, right, focus. That's it, right, two second timer. And we're away. Okay, I'm quite pleased with that image. 
Now what I'll do when I get back to the office is I'll select subject in Photoshop or Lightroom and, and lift the lighting of the quoit up somewhat while retaining the same exposure for the sky. And I also might try and burn the sky in a little bit to make it look a bit more dramatic because there's some fairly nice light on the top left. There's a little bit of blue up there as you can see. Been here for a while now and the sky's got slightly more dramatic on the top left so after <laughs> trying to make this video about flat grey skies it's actually livened up a bit so uh, I'll show you what I can see through my viewfinder there you can see that the flat shot straight on kind of thing if we turn the tripod round slightly you can see I've got more dramatic light now coming over from the left so in colour that might look pretty good but I, I think in black and white it'll look even better If you're a beginner, you should spend a lot of time at a location. Don't just snap away. You're never going to get good pictures that way. So spend a lot of time, always walk around your subject, look at it from different angles, get down low, look at it from a low viewpoint, you know, looking back that way or from the other side. Try and get a high viewpoint if you can, even if you have to go far away and use a longer lens. The other thing you can do on a grey, flat, lifeless sky day is night photography. So it's, when it gets a bit darker, I'm going to light up the side of this quoit with my torch. So I'm here on another grey sky day at a different location now. This is Carn Bray, and behind me you can see Carn Bray Castle Restaurant, which I don't know if it was ever a castle. I think it was a hunting lodge for some rich bloke a couple of hundred years ago. Anyway, it's a pretty uh, amazing looking place. I love the way it's hewn out of the rock. So it's not hewn out of the rock. That's when you carve something out of the rock. I love the way it's built on top of the rock. <laughs> And if I just swing my camera around, you can see my tripod is right up next to a wall and there's me, look, in the viewfinder. And this is uh, one good reason for having a nice, fully rotational screen. Because I'm backed up against this wall and I don't think I could get this shot unless I was hand holding. And I'm not very keen on hand holding. So I always get better images when I use the tripod. So I'm at 17 mil and it's going to look pretty distorted. So, but anyway, the main point of this shot is to show you how the rock looks from this angle. And I can't see how I could get this shot other than being, you know, two miles away with a 1200 mil lens. So here it is. I'm hoping this shot will work. You can see roughly what I got on my screen there. So it's definitely one of those images that suits a grey sky. Uh, there's something rugged about it and wild and rocky and I like that. So uh, yeah it might not work in colour so I might convert it to black and white when I get back to the office. So it's got several focal points and a foreground, so 
yeah, pleased with it. So I'm quite pleased with the colour version, but it's a lot better in black and white, I believe. It just suits it better. So see how well these images suit the location with a grey sky. They just, they just work better. And both of these have sold recently as fairly large prints. So coming to the end of a grey sky day, what, what I do then is I normally go to a place where there's artificial light. So a cityscape, townscape, or in this case, the village of Mevagissi, which has got a lighthouse flashing on and off. So you can see what I got through my viewfinder. The waves are crashing down in the bottom of the image. And because it's almost dark now, the waves are going to record as a blur because the exposure is four seconds. So even though this is not a great image, I think it's still great to be out on grey sky days because you're still practicing your photography skills. And even someone like me, who's been doing it for over 45 years, still <laughs> needs to practice. So here's the magic of photography. This is what the view looked like to the naked eye. And this is what a four second exposure looks like. Now notice that the boats are a complete blur at four seconds. That was at ISO 100. So again, here's another good reason to use a tripod. I took another shot at ISO 400 with a much shorter exposure time of half a second, because I was using F4 as well, not F8. So I opened up the aperture and this gave me a much shorter exposure and allows me to combine the lower part of the image, which is the boat's sharp, with the top part of the image, which is the high quality part done at ISO 100 in Photoshop. So you just put them in, into layers in Photoshop and it erase the blurred boats. And then you've got one great image, which is high quality. Now, if you're longing for some good color after all this gray sky business, take a look at this video.